If you'll take God's word and turn it with me, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading in verse number 5 in just a moment. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, we've been dealing with uh, these different individuals uh, that we see in the book of Proverbs. We dealt a couple weeks ago with the simple man, the one that lacked discernment, the one that lacked discretion. Uh, last week we dealt with the scorner, the one who mocked at the truth of God and mocked the things of God and went his own way. And uh, tonight uh, we deal with the wise man, the one who seeks after and follows and obeys the wisdom of God. Proverbs chapter 1 verse number 5, the Bible says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. And we want to deal with this man, the wise man. One author called the book of Proverbs the wise man's dictionary. The wise man's dictionary. Uh, Wise meaning uh, having the proper knowledge, proper understanding of God, being able to judge correctly. We may use the word discernment there. Being able to uh, decide what is true and what is false. Uh, To be able to apply knowledge. It's one thing to gain knowledge. It's a whole other thing to apply knowledge. And that takes wisdom. The wise man is able to do that. Someone has put a little formula together. Knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom. Now, where do we get that from? We'll look over just the next chapter, chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, Solomon writing, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now look at verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom, the wisdom of God. I want you to think about this wise man, three different areas, and we're going to turn quite a bit tonight uh, throughout this book of Proverbs as we deal with the wise man, three different areas. First of all, and we're going to look at the actions, uh, the actions of the wise man. Then we're going to look at the attributes of the wise man. And finally, we're going to look at the awards of the wise man. First of all, I want you to notice back in our text verse, uh, I want you to notice where we begin here with this uh, actions of the wise man. The Bible says in verse number 5, notice here in the first part, a wise man will hear. A wise man listens. My mother used to tell me this, and she was right. And she's right about a lot of things. She's right about a lot more things than than she was wrong about. I can't think of anything she was wrong about. I'm sure she's wrong, of course. She's a human being. But she gave me good instruction, and I praise God for it. But she used to say this to me. She used to say, you learn a lot by listening. You learn a lot by listening. And if you knew my mother, you know that she's not a big talker. Uh, But I consider her to be a very wise person. And she does a lot of listening. She listens a lot. Well, the Bible says that's a characteristic right there in verse 5. A wise man will hear. And what happens when he hears, the Bible says, it will increase learning. When you listen, uh, you're able to be strengthened in wisdom. You learn. And there's a desire there, I believe, to continue to grow in wisdom. Uh, uh, You know, I have that desire tonight. I want to continue to grow in wisdom. I know I haven't haven't achieved. That's for certain. I want to continue to grow. How am I going to be able to do that? I'm going to have to listen. What am I going to have to listen to? Well, I need to listen to the truth of God and allow it to stir in my heart. The action of the wise man, first of all, he listens. What else? <clears throat> Excuse me. Look in chapter 9. He accepts correction. You want to see a wise individual? A wise individual is someone that allows other people to correct them with the truth. They, ac- 
accept correction. In other words, they come to the place where they submit to wisdom. They're easily rebuked. Matter of fact, they accept that rebuke. Uh, they accept criticism, true criticism, with a kind and a gracious spirit. Say, so how do you know that's so? Well, look here in Proverbs chapter uh, uh, 9 with me for just a minute. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 8. Remember, we looked at this verse last week. Reprove not a scorner. What does a scorner do? Well, the Bible tells us he hates you, lest he hate thee. But notice the last part of that verse. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Verse 9, continue on. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Have you ever been around somebody you can't tell them anything? No matter what you tell them, it doesn't matter. Your way is wrong and their way is right. Or whatever you've experienced, they've always experienced something greater. Or they, at least they magnify it that way, you know. Well, they can never, they can never be taught. You can never instruct them. Uh, you, can, you can never help them. You can never correct them. That's not, a, that's not a wise individual. Look in chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse number 31. Chapter 15, verse number 31. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. A person who, in other words, easily accepts rebuke, easily accepts criticism. Now, we in our human nature, of course, we don't like it uh, because we're so full of pride, we think we're always right. Uh, I remember sitting one time and a preacher said, and I want everybody to repeat after me, I am not always right. And, uh, you know, uh, for some people that really pains them to say that, you know. I'm not always right, but that's true. The Bible says there, the ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise, easily rebuked. I look at chapter 17, verse number 10. And the Bible says there, reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. In other words, you can keep going after the fool. You can keep, you can keep striking the fool, uh, but he just becomes more foolish. He doesn't come around into wisdom. He doesn't accept correction. The Bible says if you're going to be a wise man, if you're going to be a wise man, then what? Well, first of all, you're going to be, you have a listening ear, and you're going to accept correction. And then uh, uh, another thought, I want you to look with me in chapter 10 of the book of Proverbs, and we found out that a wise individual... A wise individual makes preparation. A wise individual prepares for certain things. Look in uh, chapter 10, verse number 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, their vanity, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. What are those verses talking about there? They're talking about preparation. Preparation. Uh, making preparation for that which is uh, 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 going to come to pass. Uh, uh, not following the way of the wicked man, not following the way of the, the fool, not going after that way, uh, uh, but understanding the way of wisdom is a way of preparation. Look in chapter 18, Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 15. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 15. The Bible says here, The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. In other words, a truly wise person is not content where they're dwelling in wisdom. They're, they're seeking after more. Uh, uh, they want more understanding of who God is and what God desires for them. They want more of that knowledge of the holy. And so they're preparing to do that. All throughout life, they're preparing to do that. And that preparation doesn't stop because why? All of life is a preparation to meet God. We're going to meet God. Job said, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to see Him in my flesh. It's preparation to meet God all the way through. That's why we ought never, 
God never give up or quit or stop or get to a place to say, I'm going to let somebody else, I'm going to, you know, we might have to physically relinquish some things that we do because we're just not physically able to do them anymore. Uh, uh, but to just press on, press on for the Lord until he calls us home. Preparation. And then uh, look back again at chapter 10 and notice that a wise individual, a wise person follows instruction. A wise person follows instruction. Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. The Bible says there, a, the wise in heart will receive. They'll receive it. They'll accept it. They'll, they'll, they'll take it. They'll follow the instruction that has been given to them. Look at chapter 13 and verse number 1. The Bible says there, A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Here, again, the picture of Solomon speaking to his son. A wise son hears his father's instruction. When his father counsels him on certain things, he heeds it. He follows it. I wore a long coat tonight. You say, what in the world does this guy do anything? You follow me. I wore a long coat tonight to church. I can remember as a teenager and as a young man in Bible college, when it was cold out like this, my father, this is a simple illustration, but my father used to tell me, he said, look, he said, when you go a long distance, you put that, you, you put that coat on, you wear that coat. Now he said that because we used to travel 35 uh, minutes one way across the mountain in an area where there was nothing around and you could pull your cell phone out if you wanted to but it, it might as well be just a brick in your hand because it didn't work there wasn't any signal and he would tell me to wear that long coat because on nights like this he said if the car breaks down you're going to want something that's going to keep you warm and uh, you know what I thought oh dad that's just for that's just for old people you know that's just for old people well you know what I guess it was I guess 34, 35 became old all of a sudden. And I was like, i tell you one thing. I only live 20 minutes from this church, and there's a lot of people in between, and my cell phone works the whole way. But i tell you one thing. This car breaks down. I'm going to have that long coat. So you can make fun of me if you want, but I don't care. You know. That, that was listening to a father's instruction. Now, that seemed like a simple thing, uh, uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, it was for my good, right? And for a while, I thought I was pretty pretty smart in my own devices uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, uh, that when it comes to the truth of God and the wisdom of God then we ought to hear God's voice and receive his instruction and obey him and follow him what else well look here at chapter 10 you're close by again there's another one here chapter 10 we're talking about the actions of the wise man Notice what the Bible says here in chapter 10, verse number 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. It's kind of like a, an individual who puts money into a, uh, into a savings account there. It, it shows the, the value of wisdom in laying up, having some by, storing it away. A wise man does what? He gains he gains knowledge. He stores it away. He puts that, uh, he puts that there and realizes, here's a, here's, here's a truth that I want to hang on to. Have you ever sit in a Sunday school class or in a, or in a message or, or, or maybe you were in a Bible study somewhere and, and something hits you, the Spirit of God hits you with the truth and you say, I'm going to store that up. I'm going to lay that up. I need that for another time. Uh, that's where taking, uh, taking notes is helpful, you know. Somebody said a, a, a short pencil is better than a long memory, right? And uh, writing things down, keeping track of things like that. They gain knowledge. What else? A wise person does this. This is an important one. Look at verse 19, same chapter, chapter 10, verse number 19. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. Now what does that mean? That means oftentimes, no doubt about it, the more you talk, the more the fact that you're going to talk yourself in to something or say something that you shouldn't say. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. It doesn't lack, in other words. That's what want means, lack. It's not lacking any sin. 
but he that refraineth his lips, what does the Bible say about him, is wise, right? Boy, you know, we have to learn that, don't we? We have to learn when to speak, when to speak. Uh, uh, know how to uh, uh, keep our tongue. Uh, the Bible says in chapter 17, uh, verse number 28, it says this, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, think about that, he, uh, a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is what? Counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You know what a wise man, we're talking about the actions of a wise man, he keeps his tongue. He watches his tongue. He watches what comes out of his mouth. At chapter 11, Proverbs chapter 11, uh, verse number 30. Uh, notice here what the Bible says. The actions of the wise man, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And notice this, he that winneth souls is wise. You know what a wise person does? A wise person sets out to lead others to Christ. A wise person does that. They seek to win souls. Uh, 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 that's one of the characteristics of wise individuals. They're seeking to win others to Christ. Uh, what else? Look in chapter 12, verse number 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Can't talk him out of it. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A wise person hearkens to counsel that is given to him. Have you ever had anybody ask you something? And they said, uh, what do you think I ought to do? And you told them what you thought they ought to do, and they go and they do the exact opposite. You kind of just want to say, well, you know, why, why did you bother to ask, right? Uh, chapter 13, verse number 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. The well-advised. Proverbs chapter 19, verse number 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. The Bible also tells us here in this same book in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Right? Hearken to counsel. That's the actions of a wise man. Uh, then a wise man is known by his companions as well. Uh, uh, notice chapter 13, if you will. Chapter 13 and verse number 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You know, it's, it's very important. This obviously is not the only place that the Bible references who we keep company with, how vitally important that is. The Bible says that a wise individual walks with other wise people. Wise men are his companions. Look at chapter 14, verse number 16. Chapter 14, verse 16. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. In other words, the wise man puts God's wisdom into action in his life. He departs from evil. He, he's like, a, he's like a, a Job who eschewed evil. That word, that's an old English word. We don't use it anymore. It means to take the foot out of the path of. Departed from evil. He didn't even head down the direction towards evil. He was it. He, he got out of the path of it. And then a wise man does this. And, and, and by the way, there is a, uh, uh, well, it's probably always been afoot in some way, but it seems like in, in, in recent times there's been a move back for, for Bible people to think it's okay to consume alcohol as a beverage. The Bible says in chapter 20, verse number 1 of the book of Proverbs, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby, what? Is not wise. Look, if it was wrong then, it, look, God's absolutes are absolute. They don't, they don't change. Now, of course, our society has changed, but God never changes. And His standards, they don't change. They're absolute. So if it was wrong then, it's wrong now. And it'll always be wrong. So a wise person does what? A wise person abstains from liquor, uh, abstains from alcohol as a beverage. What else does a wise person do? Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 7. Notice what the Bible says. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of righteous men shameth his father. And we think more along the lines of young people and those who are still in the home and obeying their parents. 
and that's true, but I think if we can make an application, we don't, we don't stretch this out of context, the fact that it is good to obey the authority that God has placed in our lives, to obey God's law. The wise person does that. What else? Look in chapter 8, if you would. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. A wise person does this as well. They obtain understanding. Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. Remember, this is wisdom personified, wisdom speaking. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Look at chapter 10. Chapter 10, two verses here, verse 13, verse 23. The Bible says, In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Look at verse uh, uh, 23. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief. It's like a game. But a man of understanding hath wisdom. What does the wise man do? He obtains understanding. He receives it. He seeks after it. He gets it. Then a wise man does this as well. A wise man fears God. Chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord, matter of fact, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. A wise man reverences. He respects. Seeks to obey God. Fears God. And he also does something else. That naturally leads to chapter 11, verse 12. That naturally leads to respecting others. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A wise man shows respect for others. And then, as we think about these actions of the wise man, here's one last one. A wise man knows prudence. He knows prudence. What is prudence? Prudence is discretion. Look in chapter 14, verse number 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. The Bible had said in the previous verse, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. And the Bible says the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is to deceit. Look at one other passage, chapter 16, verse number 21. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. A wise individual knows discretion, knows prudence. Think about these actions, these actions of a wise man. But think about as well the attributes. What are some of the attributes of a wise man? Well, look in chapter 10, verse number 31, and we see one of his attributes is this. Uh, he is just and he is fair. He's just and he's fair. The Bible says, The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom. He's just, he's right. He's going to do, he or she is going to do that which is right. They're going to live in such a way that is right. It's pleasing to God. Look at chapter 24. Chapter 24, verse number 23. Chapter 24, 23. These things, the Bible says, also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He's fair. He's just. He's not regarding someone else higher than somebody else. Better than someone else. Fair and just. What else? A wise man is patient. Look in chapter 29, verse number 8. 29, verse number 8, the Bible says, Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Scornful men, they work it up. They work up the fury. They work up the anger. They work up the wrath. See how much they can stir the pot. What does the Bible say about the wise man? He, he seeks to turn away wrath. He seeks to put out the fire, if you will, than to stir it up. It's patient. Then we find as well another attribute is humility. Look in Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 1. The Bible says a false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. He's humble. He's humble. 
There's humility there in his heart. And then he's generous with wisdom. In other words, he doesn't keep it all to himself. He wants others to know about it. He wants to proclaim wisdom to others. He wants everyone to know the benefits of having the wisdom of God. Chapter 15 and verse number 7, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. He, he wants others to enjoy the same understanding and the same discernment, prudence, if you will, the same wisdom that he has. And so he wants to make it known, not in a boastful way, but he wants others to know. Hey, here's a great, here's something great, a great truth to hang on to. Here's, here's some wisdom from God. And it's a refreshing thing to be able to have others encourage you that way and let you know something that they've gleaned from the truth of God. Generous with wisdom. We've seen the actions of the wise man, the attributes of the wise man. Let me give you the last thing. The awards. The awards of the wise man. What are the what are the benefits? of walking in wisdom. What are the benefits? Well, notice what the Bible says in chapter 3. Go back there for just a minute. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 16. The Bible says, Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Look at verse number 35. Same chapter. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of what does the wise man do? The wise man receives honor. He receives honor. He, the Bible says here, he inherits glory. Not something that he's heaped upon himself. No, that's not it. But because this person has sought after the truth of God, and sought after the wisdom of God, they become wise. They receive honor for that. What else? What are the other awards of the wise man? Uh, well, they are a blessing. Wise individuals are a blessing to parents. They're a blessing to parents. And you say, well, my parents are grown and gone. Well, they're a blessing to others around them as well. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh the glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Proverbs chapter 15, uh, uh, verse number 20, uh, the Bible says here, a wise son maketh the glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Uh, just one more place, chapter 23, uh, uh, verse number 15. And notice what the Bible says here, Proverbs 23, 15. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Verse 24, the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. What a blessing to be pleasing. What a blessing to be pleasing to our families, to our parents to the God-ordained authority that's in our lives. Receives honor, has a glad father, obtains a favor. The Bible speaks of that, if you will, in Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse uh, number 20. He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. We'll live a happy life. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. The Bible says a wise man obtains favor. He has length of days. We just read that in chapter 3, verse number 16. That's in his, in, in his right hand, length of days. He possesses riches. Look in chapter 14, verse 24. By the way, you balance all these out against uh, uh, much of what Solomon was. 14, 24, the crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. By the way, don't think just of material riches. Don't just think of those. Think about the blessing of God. Think about uh, 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 a, a godly family. Think about a sound uh, church home. Just the general blessings of God in our lives. Possesses riches. His ways are ways, the Bible says in chapter 3 and verse 17, uh, 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 her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. You want to live a pleasant, peaceful life? Have the wisdom of God. Seek the wisdom of God. We already dealt a little bit with happiness. The Bible says in verse 18, that she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, she being wisdom. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. By the way, there's protection found in the walk of the wise man. Chapter 4, verse 6, Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Look at chapter 13 and verse number 4. 
the Bible says, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Wrong, wrong one. Verse 14. Chapter 13, verse 14. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Protection. Protection. The wise man is rewarded. Look in chapter 24, verse number 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. I want you to think about one last one. The wise man is delivered. The wise man is delivered. Look in chapter 28. Chapter 28. The awards we're talking about here. The awards of the wise man. Chapter 28, verse number 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. One last passage. Chapter 15, verse 24. The way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from hell beneath. Think about that. The way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from hell beneath. You know, I thank God tonight I've been pardoned from hell. Aren't you glad of that? Thank God for that. We've been, been delivered. Now, you think about these things, the actions, the attributes, the awards of the wise individual, the wise man, the wise uh, uh, woman, for that matter, the wise young person. The truth of the matter is, these are things that every believer ought to strive to be. He ought to strive after. Now, we ought to be like Paul. We ought to be seeking to apprehend that for which we've been apprehended. We ought to be following after. We don't ever reach perfection in this life, but we ought to be striving for these things that we're following them. To be so saturated with God's wisdom that that is what we are identified by, a wise person. And God help it to be so in our lives, that we wouldn't be, uh, 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 that we wouldn't be like the simple man, void of understanding, void of discernment. That we wouldn't be like the scorner who's mocking the truth and the things of God. But we ought to be like the wise man who's seeking to be identified by God's wisdom. God help us to strive after it. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for these wonderful truths we've seen throughout your Word tonight in the Book of Proverbs. And as we think about how they were given and inspired by the Spirit of God through this man Solomon for the most part. Now, Lord, help us to strive after these things. And they are ours. We know that wisdom crieth without. It's open not just for a select group of people, but it's open to all who would seek after it. And help us to truly be seekers of these things. May these be the actions that define our lives. May these be the attributes that, 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 that we carry on. And we know that if that is the case, then we are awarded. And no doubt we can say, even our own lives as believers, as we follow this pattern, that we've been awarded in these ways. We thank you for that. Help us to continue, we pray, to be obedient to you. How many of you tonight would say, Pastor, it's my desire to seek after these things. There are some things here that I know that God has dealt with me about tonight, some things I need to work on, because I want to be a wise individual. Would you remember me in this prayer? Would you lift your hand and hold it high? Anyone like that? Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us now. Lord, you've seen the hands. Most importantly, you've seen the hearts. Help us, we pray, to, to seek these things, to be obedient to thee, that we can truly be wise individuals, not in our own estimation, but in your estimation, from your truth. God, direct us, we pray. Give us safety to our homes. Bring us back again at the appointed time. On the Lord's name, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.